Ayuki, my name is Sharina Baker. I'm half Southern Ute and half Karuk, and this is my educational story. So I'm gonna try to get this done in five minutes. Okay, go. It all started in Northern California. I went to the public school, K through 12, graduated high school with a 1.9, but before I graduated, I had no idea where I was going at all. My friends all were going to college. They were excited. They all had bright futures. And here I was with no idea. I reached out to one of my cousins or she kind of reached out to me. Either way, she lived in Lawrence, Kansas, which happens to be the same town at where Haskell Indian Nations University is. She, she told me, she was like, look, apply and we can get an apartment and it'll make the transition easier, which it did. I applied with so many, oh God, so many prayers, so many prayers. Like I didn't think I could get in because prior to that, prior to applying, I talked to the counselors and she said, I didn't really have a chance of getting in any colleges because I, my grades were so bad and I had no AP classes, nothing for college that they would, nobody would want me basically. Like she was like, reject, nobody wants you girl, quit dreaming which was kind of rude and sad, but she gave me no option, no other options either. <laughs> now that I think about it, maybe she wanted me to fail. No. Okay. So got in, was super happy. After high school graduation, I got to just be all about my tribal culture. Um, I brush danced all summer, every spot. And it was just the most beautiful thing. Actually, as a matter of fact, the day before I flew out to Lawrence, Kansas, I participated in a ceremony. I got picked to be a medicine girl for our camp that year at Ketamine. And I had been fasting for, I believe, four days. And I we, we have our dances started in the evening and we're done um, the next morning. And so I had like hardly any sleep. I was hungry, but but after fasting, you can't just eat anything. <laughs> I learned the hard way on that. And I tried eating and <laughs> my stomach ended up hurting. So anyway, after that, we drove home, hardly, hardly any sleep. I remember I slept for like maybe five hours when we got to my auntie's house. And then we woke up that evening and I had to go back to my house, pack all my clothes. And at four in the morning later on, my mom took me to the airport and I was in Lawrence, Kansas that next morning. That's how fast it went for me. And I wouldn't have changed it any other way. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I was fresh from ceremony, showed up to Lawrence, Kansas, <laughs> and I showed up to a registration and I was, it was just such a culture shock. Like I loved every second of it. I was, I was nervous, of course. I had anxiety, like, I don't know what to expect. But the one thing I didn't really realize was that how much I didn't know about Native Americans or like the whole race in general. Like I had an idea of what it was. I didn't know people use the same language, like our, the lingos. So like I would say, hey, and like they would say it back. Like they said it like they've been saying it their entire life. And it was so cool. I was just so like related to everybody. And I, I don't think I would have had a better experience if I would have gone to a different college, to a community college where back home or to a mainstream university. Like I was so happy I chose to apply to Haskell and I loved it. As a matter of fact, I pro purposely prolonged my time there. I was supposed to graduate, I believe in 2008, but I kept it another year because I loved it so much. And I graduated in 2009. It took me five years to get my bachelor's degree in American Indian studies. Um, and then I didn't, wasn't ready to go home yet. And I got offered a job with Dr. Wildcat because I had done two internships with him before while I was still a student. And with this job, oh man, it was, I was doing so many different things. It like opened up so many opportunities. I got to travel. Um, I was a project coordinator for the American Indian Alaska Native Climate Change Working Group. And so eventually after a few years of working um, for the working group, I applied, I will, I was hesitant, but all the people, all my peers, 
all my mentors, they were like, you have to go to grad school, like just do it. And so I applied, I applied to um, the University of Kansas in Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, I got in on academic probation as well because I graduated high school with a 2.8 and so you need a 3.0 in order to get into grad school and so I I did and I proved I raised my grades I proved that I could do it um, when I did eventually go in 2014 I got accepted in 2013 but I ended up having a baby and so I prolonged another year um, so I started grad school with a eight month old and that was a little rough, but I did it. Got my master's in indigenous studies from KU in 2017. And flash forward to today, I just finished my first year in a PhD program, the language literacy, social cultural studies, um, PhD program in the education department at the University of New Mexico with an emphasis in American Indian education. 